Hi, I'm Cameron Shower, a gastroenterology doctor. That's a specialist of the gut. And today, I want to tell you about gut health. I want to cover four really important things that I think might change the way you think about your gut, think about your overall health, and without being too dramatic, may truly save your life. The first thing is, what is the gut? Well, the gut is the 10 to 12 meters of tubing between your mouth, where the food goes in, and the bottom where the stool comes out. The gut is made up of the esophagus or food tube that connects onto the stomach, that connects onto the small intestine, which snakes along for five to seven meters, then connects onto the large intestine, one and a half to two meters, where stool is made and passes out. As well as that, there's the additional organs, the pancreas and the liver, which sit in the middle of the abdomen that help to digest, process food and eliminate the toxins and waste. Why are these things important? The gut is the engine to the body. When the gut is working well and it's humming along, things in the body are healthy. The hair, the skin, and especially important is how you feel. Number two, why is the gut important? The gut has a number of different functions, but in my mind, I think about three of the most important functions that the gut performs. Number one is that it absorbs all of the nutrients of the foods that you eat and diffuses them out into the body. Number two is that the gut manages the waste. It helps to filter and eliminate toxins and remove them from the body. And number three, things that people don't think of is that the gut is crucial to your immune system. Over 70% of your immune system is dependent on the gut. So as I've mentioned, if the gut is working well, the body will be working well. But what happens if the gut isn't working well? I want to tell you a bit more about that as well. Something interesting about the gut is that there's over a thousand different types of bacteria living inside. If you took all of these bacteria out, they'd weigh over two kilograms. It's sort of the hidden organ that has possibly been forgotten. And this you may have heard of is called the microbiome. Scientists and researchers are looking into different ways how to change the microbiome, but everyone has got a different bacterial profile. Think of it kind of like your fingerprint. We think that a lot of this is the key to your physical health, but also your mental and emotional well-being as well. Changing the inside and your microbiome and optimizing it to make sure that you're healthy is crucial. And number three is what are some things that you can do today or starting tomorrow that will improve your overall gut health? The first thing you've probably already guessed is diet. A lot of people will say, what are some of the dietary things that I can do to change my gut health? People may want to have a quick or easy fix popping to the pharmacy to get probiotics, little capsules with multiple different bacteria inside it. Whilst this may work for some people, as I've mentioned, everyone's gut bacteria are different and specific to them. And so whilst it may work for some, it may not work for others. Here are some tips that we think, or at least I think, will work for everyone to improve your gut health. Number one is prebiotics. Prebiotics are fermentable foods that feed your own natural intrinsic bacteria that you have. Simple things like changing white rice to brown rice, white bread to brown bread, and things like grains, legumes, and beans are feeding your own bacteria and fueling your own engine to optimize your gut health. 
Secondly, some foods with natural probiotics in it. Things that are on the inside like sauerkraut, kombucha, yogurts. Those are really good for developing and improving gut bacteria. Thirdly, is keeping an eye and managing your weight. Lots of people ask me in clinic, almost on a daily basis, what are the best diets to lose weight? Or at least to have a healthy body weight. Lots of different research has been done into that. But again, managing your weight and having a healthy body weight is crucial to gut health. It's been shown that having a body weight that's appropriate for you ch actually changes the microbiome and the bacteria on the inside. What diet do you think is the best for you? Lots of research again has gone into this and really finding something that is sustainable for you that you can continue on a longer term basis and not just over a short period is really the key to improving that and improving your gut health. Lastly, exercise. Again, exercise has been shown to change uh, your gut health and to change the bacteria on the inside. So when you're exercising, possibly for 30 minutes a day, two to three times a week, not only are you changing your whole body composition, but you're changing the bacteria on the inside and consequently, you're changing your gut health. If you can implement some of those things, I think you'll notice not only changes in your physical well-being, but also your mental well-being, and I'll tell you why. When you're an embryo inside your mum's belly, the brain and the gut were one. As you grew, these split apart, but the nerves still connected these, have still connected these two organs. We now know a little bit more about this, and even the names potentially of the nerves, like the vagus nerve. This is part of the autonomic nervous system, which is the nervous system that you can't control, unlike the nerves that control your arms and your legs. By having good gut health, you will improve your mental health. By having good mental health, you also improve your gut health. A way to think about this is that researchers have tried to manipulate the bacteria in the gut and they've tried this in mice. They've found mice that are fearless and they've found mice that are very timid and they've changed the bacteria inside these mice and the personalities of the mice have changed. So I think you'll find that if you can implement some of these things, not only will your physical well-being improve, but I think you'll find that your mental well-being will change. Perhaps some of the fatigue, some of the stresses, some of the brain fog will lift as well. And it's a complete change to your overall well-being. So, so far I've told you what the gut is, why it's crucial for your overall health, and a couple of tips to improve your gut health, that being natural prebiotics, foods that you can use to fuel your own system. Number two is natural probiotics, foods that are fermentable, such as yogurt and sauerkraut and kombucha and pickles that will really improve and enhance the bacteria that you already have inside you. And three, managing your weight and exercise through a sustainable diet and a sustainable regimen that you'll find will have benefits not only in the short term but also in the long term for your gut health and your mental health. But what happens when things don't go well with the gut? The gut is a massive organ, metabolically active, cells turning over all the time. One of those cells goes wrong that you can develop cancer. And in New Zealand, unfortunately, we have one of the highest rates of gut cancer in the world. In fact, today, 15 New Zealanders will be diagnosed with a gut cancer. Eight of those people will die as a result of their gut cancer per day. 
half of all of those are due to cancers of the colon or the large intestine. New Zealand has one of the highest rates of colon cancer in the entire world. The lifetime risk in New Zealand for someone developing colon cancer is 5%. Age is of course one of the most important risk factors. As you become older, you're more likely to develop, to develop cancer. But this isn't just a disease of the elderly, and we've seen more and more young patients being diagnosed with colon cancer. In the age group between 20 and 49, there's a 4% year-on-year increase in the rates of colon cancer. 30% of colon cancer diagnosed in New Zealand is diagnosed under the age of 60 years old. The other statistic that goes along with that is that at presentation, when the colon cancer is found, more than 25% of patients are already metastatic. The cancer has moved outside of the colon into the rest of the body. And that's one of the highest rates in the Western world. Many of you will be sitting there thinking, why is this? Lots of people have been looking into that question and there's certainly something that we have to do about it. It's likely a complex interaction between our environment, your specific genetics, and gut health. Some of the most important risk factors that we know about is obesity or your body weight. Many of you will already not be smoking. And we've discussed the importance of diet, higher in fruits and vegetables, and lower in preserved uh, meats. The other thing is to know your family history, particularly with bowel cancer, and that if you, have a fa if you have a family member with colon cancer, that may increase your risk yourself of developing this by over two times. The other thing is, is to know your body. Keep an eye on symptoms or things that change for you. Specifically, bleeding from the bowel, tiredness and potentially a low blood count, which is a blood test that can be arranged through your GP. As a specialist, the trouble I have with diagnosing bowel cancer is that the symptoms are so non-specific and so varied. And potentially that's why there's a delay in diagnosis. What's really important is for you to know your own body, know what's normal for you, know what your usual bowel habit which is different for each and every person. If that changes, and if that change is persistent, you should get that checked out by your GP and discuss it with them. Maybe embarrassing for you, but as specialists and doctors, this is what we speak about day in, day out. Any alterations for you or anything that concerns you with regard to blood, with regard to pain, regard to a change in the stool caliber or the consistency or frequency or urgency of your bowels is really important for us to know so that we can help to change these statistics. Because the symptoms are so difficult to detect, New Zealand has introduced a bowel cancer screening program. Some of you in the age bracket may have been invited, age 60 to 74. Bowel screening is in patients with no symptoms whatsoever. A stool test is completed to check for microscopic blood, blood that you can't see. This has been incredibly successful in New Zealand at detecting both bowel cancer and also extremely early cancer that can be cured as well as detecting and removing bowel polyps to even prevent cancer from occurring. If the test is positive, that does not mean that you have bowel cancer. What it means is that you need to go on to the next step of testing, which will be a colonoscopy, to look inside the bowel and see what might be causing microscopic blood loss. So what is a colonoscopy? 
Colonoscopy involves flushing and cleansing the bowel of all the stool so that we can see what's inside the large intestine. It's a day-stay procedure, the whole procedure only taking about 30 to 40 minutes. A small, thin, flexible tube is passed through the bottom end, the diameter of which is only one centimeter. It's a painless procedure with medication put in through the vein to make you sleepy throughout. You'll go home on the same day, about an hour after the procedure. Come with me and let's see what colonoscopy might see and find. Here we are inside Colin the Colon to show you a real life view of what I see when I perform a colonoscopy. One of the massive benefits of performing colonoscopy is that we're able to detect bowel polyps. Polyps are the precursors to bowel cancer. Polyps are little warty outgrowths from inside the lining of the large intestine. The lining is similar to the lining inside your mouth. By seeing and detecting polyps, which are precancerous, quickly, safely and efficiently we're able to remove these polyps, it can reduce your chance of developing colorectal cancer. If we do find something more advanced uh, inside the bowel, such as colon cancer, this, if detected early, is completely treatable and beatable, and we will arrange further treatment from there. So in summary, today I hope you've taken away some important information about your gut health, about your gut, about why it's important, things that you can do from today to change your gut health, like diet, natural things like pre and probiotics and food. It's important to know your normal, know your normal symptoms for yourself, talk about these with friends and family and your doctor. It may be embarrassing, but it may save your life.